as one of the 177 cities and towns benefiting from MBTA service, Needham is mandated to amend its zoning to encourage more multifamily housing near its train stations by the end of this year. Now, failure to comply would result in Needham losing its eligibility for certain state funding. Leading this effort is HONE, or the Housing Needham Advisory Group, which is tasked with crafting compliance strategies that not only meet state requirements, but also satisfies various visions from residents. HONE has hosted two public engagement meetings. At their third and final planned community meeting on March 28th, they will present two proposals resulting from resident feedback. We caught up with um, Heidi Frail and Natasha Espada, the co-chairs of HONE, to learn more about this process. It is perhaps one of the most complicated public engagement processes the town of Needham has undertaken. Zoning not only determines what can be built where, but also the height, density, size, and other building details. The topic of zoning, and particularly zoning within the MBTA Communities Act, is extraordinarily complicated, complicated and emotional. For Needham, the bare minimum is to allow 1,784 units to be built in the total land area of 50 acres by right, among which 90% of 1,606 units must be allowed within a half mile from the train stations. Additionally, it must accommodate an average of 15 units per acre. That means most changes will focus along the town's transportation route, from Highland Avenue to Chestnut Street, where development of higher density already exists. Given the town's dedication to addressing the housing crisis over the past few years, questions have arisen about whether Needham should seize the opportunity to stimulate more housing. The question to the public is not only are we going to comply, but how do we want to comply and do we want to try and change this housing deficit. And from being on the planning board, we get very few housing projects. So just because the zoning is in place doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually being implemented because there are a lot of barriers. So understanding what those barriers are and understanding where we want housing and how can we help um, that housing occur um, in the future is just as important as changing the zoning. At the first community meeting held last November, the committee used surveys to gauge residents' opinions on potential alterations to the existing zoning requirements by districts. At the second community meeting held in January, the committee presented three scenarios for participants to rank their preferences. The three choices were meant to have some daylight between them so that people could see what the range of options were. And then we had a short survey that allowed people to rank their choices. So you get to pick not only your first choice, the one you like best, but the ones you like second best and third best. And that gave us not only a sense of the majority preference was, but also what the compromise preference was. Among the 595 responses received, 52% expressed a preference for the base compliance scenario, which would maintain the existing zoning boundaries, but modify certain height and density requirements to achieve the mandated 1,784 units. The remaining 48% expressed a desire for the town to exceed the minimum requirement. This group included preferences for a scenario that allows 2,600 units and another that allows nearly 4,800 units. Notably, while 30% of respondents favored the latter, 76% opted for the former as a compromise. Among the two more ambitious scenarios, the first adopted the zoning boundaries recommended in the 2022 housing plan which allowed apartments in more areas. The second scenario went even further, increasing allowed height density and lot coverage based on public feedback. Additionally, it incorporated some general residential areas to allow for up to four units per parcel. Proponents for the two more aggressive options advocate for seizing the opportunity to make Needham's land policy more favorable to diverse housing options. Opponents voice concerns about the potential burden on the town's stormwater management system and other infrastructure. After considering input from both sides, the committee decided to present two plans for town meeting consideration in October, a base compliance scenario and a more expansive add-on scenario. 
The committee will collaborate with consultants to craft the add-on plan at its February 15th meeting. We're not doing scenario two necessarily. We're not doing scenario three. We're, we're creating a new plan that's an add-on. Many have raised equity concerns regarding the lack of reasoning in areas around the Hersey station. We found it very difficult to create a, a district that would be compliant with the MBTA Communities Act around the Hersey station um, for various reasons, most having to do with, with land that's ineligible for the map. But the committee explained it does not mean public recommendations fell on deaf ears. This plan is just the beginning of the town talking about other areas of town that don't necessarily have anything to do with the plan that will make Needham better. It's important that we're, for the public to know that we're compiling a list of all the changes that we think make sense, that we would like to see, that we believe are reasonable, and then we'll recommend those changes to the planning board. In addition to the details of the two proposals, residents attending the community meeting on March 28th will also be able to learn about their fiscal impact, including school enrollment, tax revenue, and infrastructure. The committee anticipates submitting the two plans to the State Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities in May for review, which could take as long as three months. Then it will go before the planning board, which will hold public hearings while drafting zoning language to be voted on at town meeting in October. For Needham Channel News, I'm Yu Xiaoyuan.